we'd like to thank all our special guests for coming today. Uh, but we'd also like to remind everybody to turn off all phones and revive their and cell phones and whatnot. Um, and without further ado, we'll let Elizabeth, Elizabeth go first and introducing her is Renee.
In late October, my mother faced a cancer scare, massive surgery, kidney failure, weeks of dialysis, and an array of other health concerns. Over a year earlier, I had lost my grandmother, and I was terrified that I was going to lose my mother too. Plus, everyone knows junior year is horrible, so that didn't exactly make things any easier. I was working my butt off in school, leaving exactly at 3.20, would go straight to the hospital to be with my mom, leave around 10, go home, eat, shower, do hours of homework, and sleep however long I had left. This was one of the most challenging and difficult times, but I knew I had to be optimistic and persevere through it. After getting home late one night from the hospital, I sat in my room and stared out of a window, looking at the frost on the grass of the front lawn. I sat there for a good solid hour in silence, because I literally had no energy to move or do anything else. Everything looked so peaceful and quiet. I realized I hadn't seen the outside for a very long time. Well, I mean, I'd seen it, of course, but I hadn't really seen it, recognized it, and acknowledged it. I had been cooped up in the hospital for so long and had my nose in my textbooks trying to get good grades for such a long time that I created my own little windowless world of worry. My grandmother's quote popped in my head again. Sometimes God closes a door in your face. It's natural. Though people often look so hard and search so long to find another open door that they oversee the open window right next to them. I finally understood what that quote meant. It was 2 a.m. and I actually used my brain. I had never felt so accomplished. I realized that the quote conformed to my life perfectly. I realized that my grandmother had been referring to opportunities that I had missed when I was younger, like Miss Valley's recitals and birthday parties, and was trying to serve me a little sliver of optimist cake to make me feel better. Well, the quotes took on a new meaning for me at that moment. Instead of staring at the closed door that was just shut in my face and regretting the actions that encouraged the slamming, I should just take time and look out of the window. I had spent a lot of time regretting, thinking how things would have been different, and having nostalgia parties. I had been staring at a sealed door, expecting it to magically open at any minute. I now realize that it was more realistic, healthier, and optimistic to look out of the window. Life is way too short and precious to spend regretting it away. Now, the purpose of my speech isn't to make you all think that I've had a hard life, because I really haven't. I've been exceedingly fortunate, happy, lucky, and realized that my hardships are minimal in comparison to those of others. The purpose of my speech is to hopefully encourage those few of you actually listening to me to take time to look out of the window. That's right, shut your textbook and stare out the window. Realize how great things are and enjoy them while they last. Now, I can't remember the grade that I got on a test that I studied for for hours over last year, though I can clearly recall my moment staring out of the window. Plus, you might see something interesting out of the window, too. Double bonuses are pretty sweet.